Game collecting. Buying and selling video games isn't a new thing, but the sudden surge of people looking for retro, out of production or rarer games over modern titles, meant prices for golden oldies had nowhere to go but up. I'm not shaming game sellers, nor am I blaming them for the price hikes. It's just how things work with supply and demand. What did shock me was the amount that video games had gone up. I was adding a few pickups to my game database. Yes, I have a database. I am a geek. And I noticed the total average value for my collection had doubled. I started checking which games were considered valuable, and there were some surprises. So I wanted to take a look at some games from my collection that had become harder to find in the wild, increased in price dramatically, or just surprised me by how much the value is versus when I bought them. I also want to look at the US versus PAL regions, as some games can be worth somewhere in the hundreds in the US, but be perfectly reasonable in the UK, or vice versa. Most of my games were bought within the last 10 years from different sources. All prices will be taken from pricecharting.com, both PAL and US figures. I'll also reference CEX UK prices, as they're a popular place to pick up older games, and a lot of collectors use them to benchmark prices when buying and selling. McFarlane's Evil Prophecy This is a game I haven't seen in the wild for years. Based on Todd McFarlane's series of monster action figures and illustrations, this is more of a novelty game for some. Only released in the PAL and US regions, it received a 34 on Metacritic and sold 60,000 copies. I bought my copy maybe around 2012 and it was £1.50. Jump forward to 2017 and the price has gone up to just under £8. Take another jump to 2022 and it's just under £15. Some people might be like, that's still affordable, but the thing to focus on is how much the price increased. Around 10 times what I paid 10 years ago. CEX have it for £18, which makes the price gap even bigger. In the US regions in 2013, you could pick this up for around $6. Then there was a weird spike at the end of 2013 where people were paying $36 for a complete copy. Today, however, you can grab one for just under $12. Killer is dead. I didn't hear about this game when it came out, and hack and slash wasn't really my favorite genre back then. But I bought a copy for eight pounds a few years ago just to have it in my collection. It sold 130,000 copies and got a 64 on Metacritic, with audiences having mixed opinions about it. Some reviews saying it was confusing or badly voice acted. In 2019, you could pick up a complete PAL copy for a little over six pounds with the price jumping to around £13 today. CEX also has it for £8 on Xbox 360, but £15 for a PS3 copy. In US regions in 2013, the price was crazy at $63.24, but in subsequent years it seems to have dropped dramatically. It's now more fairly priced at $22.50. Lost Kingdoms This card-based twist on an RPG so early in the GameCube's life had a lot of people divided on whether it was good or not. A 72 on Metacritic and selling 170,000 copies, there isn't much that makes this title stand out except for the key element, nostalgia. Many adults today have memories of being a kid and cracking this game out on a Saturday morning just to enjoy the experience. Games with sentimental value can bump monetary value up, even if they weren't popular on release. Lost Kingdoms hasn't gone as crazy as some games, 
but the price difference is significant. I paid £8 for my complete copy a few years ago. And in 2018 you could pick up a complete PAL copy for around £5. And now it can go for just over £20. CEX has it priced at £15. In US regions in 2013, a complete copy was $12.99. And not even 10 years later, it's closer to $60. There seems to be more nostalgia for this game in the US, judging by the jump in price. But also, maybe because out of the 170,000 copies sold, 100,000 was in the US. Devil's Third. According to theinquisitor.com, this action, adventure, third-person shooter was doomed before it even hit the US regions. Bad international reviews scared retailers into not stocking the game, or even releasing much marketing for the title. It earned a 43 on Metacritic, was on a couple of worst games lists of 2015, didn't make the top 40 game charts in the UK. And there were rumours it only sold 3,000 copies in the US. It's by no means the worst game to ever be made, but it was bad enough to create a small cult following. The low number of copies in the US, paired with a growing interest to see how bad Devil's Third really is, made prices skyrocket. I bought my copy for £12.99 in a 3 for 2 deal around 2018 and it doesn't have the manual but retains the novelty. In 2019 the price for a complete copy was around £7.81 with the price increasing to £55 complete and loose for £45 today. CEX will sell you a copy for £60 but, as many of us know, it may or may not be complete. In US regions, a complete copy in 2016 would cost $82, but the price would fly up to between $427 and $448, with loose copies for just under $300. I think we all need a drink after prices like that. Dr. Franken. A lesser known Game Boy title, this is another example of how prices can vary wildly depending on region. I bought this at a little village fair for £10. The guy selling it couldn't tell me anything about it, so I don't know if it's a reseal, but it's sealed in some way. In 2018, a complete PAL copy would set you back around £22, while today it's closer to £46. CEX has boxed copies priced at £10 and mint copies at £20. In US regions, price charting goes back to 2013, when it would have cost $41 for a complete copy. Nearly 10 years on, it shot up to just under $130. As I have a possibly sealed copy, I was interested in what the prices were like, as it's not a very common game. In 2010, a new copy was pretty much $100. 12 years later, that price has tripled to just under $300. Whoa. As I said, this is a smaller title and I couldn't find much information on it or why it's become so expensive. Reviews from 1992 range from 43% to 88%, so not much consistency. My best guess is the mystery around it makes it more desirable. More people are exploring games through emulation or just want to see what this odd little game is about. So, there are five games from my collection whose value fluctuation surprised me, even if they didn't cross over into the hundreds. Sometimes it's the amount the price has gone up, rather than the price itself. Game collecting has become super pricey since the pandemic. 
but hopefully the prices will go down slowly and collecting can be fun again. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit your favorite combination of buttons down below.